some people have asked me to go into more depth about colonialism. And for that, you'd need to take some courses and read several books. It's not really the proper forum to go into the, the fine details. But what everybody has to know is that colonialism never stopped. It's still going on, but it has shifted. So, you know, if you break up colonialism into different sort of periods or have a periodization of colonialism, you know, the first period was about sort of just brute material extraction and conversion, right? Religious conversion. But then once modernity sort of really, really hit, it became about the civilization mission. It became about, you know, that's when you sort of have racism that was very, very formalized and, and Chattel slavery and the North, North Atlantic slave trade. And you have sort of the reformulation of law that happened specifically in the Muslim world, you know, the war against the Sharia, the war against sort of Muslim society or Islamic society and the replacement of it with sort of just this extraction state, you know, this metropole sort of periphery relationship. But even now, after the formal independence and the installation of autocrats and dictators across the Muslim world, we're just in another wave of colonialism and that wave of colonialism is much more ideological and it's much more based off of epistemic colonialism and uh, soft power and sort of economic strings when it comes to IMF loans and austerity measures in the World Bank or multinational corporations and their access to certain markets or uh, quote unquote human rights and, and pushing liberalism and pushing feminism and pushing, uh, you know, LGBTQ policies. Just just look at what happened to Uganda, right? There are consequences being played out in the geopolitical sphere, uh, depending on what you believe. And so colonialism has not stopped. It has simply shifted its tactics. And it has right now, the, the hardest thing for Muslims is trying to cling to real Islam and not the Islam that the colonizers want us to believe in. The Islam of turn the other cheek and the Islam of just personal piety and, and all these sorts of things. And you need to, to keep your head up and you need to stay awake and you need to really pay attention to how things have shifted over time and the history of ideas and how external pressures can influence and change the way that we relate and understand our own tradition. That's the scary part, because you think that you're practicing Islam, you think that you're, you know, a card-carrying Muslim, but how much of your religious identity and practice has been shaped from outside forces that are only getting you to engage with the parts of your tradition that they want you to engage with? It's a scary thing, but that's where we're at right now, and that's why, you know, everybody who's able to, not everybody is able to participate in this sort of intellectual warfare or this ideological warfare, but anybody who's got the chops and the abilities and the skills to engage in this sort of thing, it, it, I think it is your duty in this historical moment to uh, engage in this battle and to write and to read and to think and to sort of make sure that Islam stays as it is, Islam, the Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent and the Islam that the Prophet sent and not somebody else's Frankenstein Islam that they're trying to force down our throats.